but Ooh, real questionable. Uh, Meth Lab might have made it onto the live, but yeah. definitely did. Um, <laughs> and then it for sure did because I repeated it. Happy Tuesday, everybody! Welcome to another episode of Del Requisite right here on twitchtv slash proficiency bonus. Uh, we're happy to have you with us. I did see that uh, Goodman Games official was raiding with a party of six. Uh, Raid! Happy, happy to <laughs> happy to have you. That's you. Uh, you thought that was one of our players. It's actually just the sound effect that we uh, we play. It's that we have a soundboard. Oh, I'll totally um, be the sound effect. <laughs> okay, Curtis, <laughs> you can be my sound effect board. Ready? Okay, I'm gonna push the sound effect button on my soundboard. Ready? Raid! All right, terrible. Uh, so happy Tuesday, oh, okay, everybody. Well. Welcome to <laughs> welcome to an episode, another episode of delve requisite uh here on proficiency bonus this is a dungeons and dragons 5e uh live stream we play every tuesday here this is uh one half of our our campaign told from the perspective of two different uh parties um this is the uh the fool's errant um we are down alar tonight uh as our uh our beloved half elf rogue is uh, currently dealing with some medical issues that he is uh he's not feeling suited to play tonight um, hopefully everything's gonna be okay. We think he's, uh, we think he's gonna make a full recovery, but he's taking the night off. Um, Osrius, though he is a black screen, Osrius is here with us. He is currently playing Osrius and the soundboard for <laughs> the requisite. Hey! Um, so, that is, uh, that is our cast, uh, or those are the people who are, you can't see on our cast, the people you can see, including Zintris, Walter, and Brom, um, will be introduced to you shortly if you are a new, uh, a new viewer. Um, real quick before we get into our recap, um, thank you to, uh, our two sponsors here at Proficiency Bonus, Little Dragon Corp and Cardboard Castle. You can put exclamation point Little Dragon or exclamation point CCG into chat. Any point during the stream, you get a link to those websites. Um, Cardboard Castle is a brick-and-mortar uh, tabletop RPG store. Um, they have a very robust website, um, so if you are not local to their uh, their brick-and-mortar location in Evans, Georgia, I believe, um, if you're not, you can buy plenty of things from them online, uh, like me, who bought a, uh, a holographic 1990-whatever-8 uh, base set uh, Pokemon Charizard card from them, because I'm a nerd and uh, <laughs> am irresponsible with my money. Um <laughs> Uh, Little Dragon Corp, uh, of course, sells uh, polyhedral dice. Uh, you can use our code BONUS at checkout with Little Dragon Corp. If you buy any uh, dice sets from them, get 15% off of your order. Uh, so thank you to Little Dragon Corp and Cardboard Castle. Uh, thank you to anybody who is uh, hanging out with us in chat. We, we look forward to uh, chilling with you tonight and playing some D&D. And let us hit a, a little bit of a brief recap. Uh, the Fool's Errant. Uh, as your party is known, you guys are in the uh, the bookkeepers, the Ordinum Libris, um, free city state of Terra Libra. Um, you have come here uh, seeking information, seeking answers, seeking help with the uh, the ongoing um, invasion uh, of the the Ignean Empire against the Kingdom of Mithlandae. Um, backed, it seems, by your sort of nemesis organization, Brahms X affiliation, the Brotherhood of Artanis. Um, you have uh, have come here and delivered news of the fall of the Mithlindian capital to an uh, an Ignean and Brotherhood backed uh, overthrowing of their parliament and their very city. Um, and you have come to the agreement with the bookkeepers um, that you are going to aid them in resisting the. Uh, the Empire and the um, the Brotherhood of Artanis, though uh, in a bit of a roundabout way, sort of indirectly. Um, you have come into uh, the acquaintance of a new party member, uh, Miss Zintris, who came to you having uh, actually fled the Empire herself, um, though not technically a member of the Brotherhood of Artanis. She would... Oh, the uh, the, the emotes are showing up on uh, on stream this week. Uh, they did okay. not do that. They did not do that last the, week. Now I definitely some, saw the cheese just like cascade yeah. across Jason's face. Um, anyway, sorry, sidetracked. Uh, Zintris has brought news to you that she was the uh, sort of like the steward, the um, accomplice, associate, uh, executive secretary, administrative assistant for um, one of the Brotherhood of Artanis's five generals who uh, learned some information about the true nature of the Brotherhood's mission that uh, inspired her to attempt to turn against them. 
and earned her a capturing and a sending to the Igmian Empire's most infamous prison, uh, a location known to you as the Estelgath. Um, right now you are still in Terra Libra. You are kind of wrapping up your, um, your business here. Um, you have uh, contacts within the Ordinum that you are looking to uh, talk to about how and in what way one might sneak across the war front into the Ignean Empire's territory, um, and then from there get into the Estelgath to try and effect a jailbreak <coughs> of this individual. Um, before you uh, kind of get into that, there was some personal business some of you were taking care of. Um, very specifically, what we've been waiting on for a couple of weeks, uh, as scheduling conflicts have delayed us, uh, Brom, you were seeking a music shop because there was an item that you had wanted to acquire. Um, an item specifically uh, called a wand of conducting. Um, you had heard uh, tell of a music shop uh, by the name of Here Comes Treble. Um, it is located in the, uh, you know, sort of the, the market district of Terra Libra. Um, and that is sort of had what had been on your, your agenda. Um, Alar had some stuff going on. He's not here tonight, so we're going to put that on hold. Um, and then the others of you who have, you know, any thoughts of things you want to do while here in the city, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how tonight plays out. Everybody up to speed? Yep. Um, then why don't we start, uh, since I, I kind of announced it formally, let's start with Brom. Um, you are in search of this wand of conducting. You were told that, you know, there was a music shop in town where you, you, you know, could procure one of these. Um, why don't you sort of, you set the scene for me. You know, what time of day it is? Is it, are you alone? Are you with, you know, any of the others? You kind of tell me, you know, you know the location of this shop and that's about it. What, uh, what's our scene here? Um, probably like mid afternoon and, okay. uh, I guess it's like, Br like Brom would have said to whoever that he was like going. So like basically anybody who wanted to go along could go along. Was that the same day we gone to Sears? Uh, I mean, it can be. You did. Sears you was went the to Sears and you dropped off Walter specifically. You left. Um, you left information on that. Um, that like yeah, earth magic sort of thing. spell that you were you were trying to get um, Nuri Rattlesnap to help you um, modify into like a a sort of like a portable castable version of that spell, um, which she told you she would work on. Okay, um, I guess after that I'll probably just head over to where meet up with Brahm and try to find this music shop with him. All right, Zintris and Osiris, what are you guys doing? I'm gonna do the same. All right. Yeah, I'm not doing along. anything. I think I was under. I, uh, we're, 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 you're currently our parolee, being, so yeah, I'm yeah. being babysat. So wherever the group all goes, I have to go. Fair whether enough. I like it or not. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm just here. <laughs> so you're just here. Um, probably finding five gold within the next few minutes, <laughs> if if uh, history tracks. Maybe. Um, who knows? Who knows? Uh, oh, you know, probably, because it is, in fact, you who keeps giving yourself five gold, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. You guys, uh, so led by Brom, you guys head through the streets of the um, uh, the city of Terra Libra, and you find your way to uh, the small out-of-the-way shop um, with a, uh, a very simple sort of wooden hand-carved sign. Um, that has the words, here comes treble, uh, engraved on it in the common tongue. There is a small, like, uh, um, there's a couple of little, like, musical notes, and there is an etching of, uh, what looks to be, as a stringed instrument, like, reminiscent of, like, a violin or of, uh, like, a, a viol or something like that, that, you know, is, uh, classically string instrument shaped on the sign. Um, this, uh, this establishment is tucked a little bit out of the way. Um, it's not on one of, like, the main busy... Uh, thoroughfare market streets but it is uh, well maintained from what you can see from the outside the you know the front stoop is swept and clean and it is it is well cared for um, in the windows you can see an array of like musical instruments on dis uh, on display you can see that the inside of the shop is um, sort of cluttered in a, a you know in an endearing way with um, various musical accoutrements and uh, um, you know, 
things like racks of sheet music, things like that. Um, it is has a little like open sign on the door, um, so it appears to be open for business. Uh, we're, we're going in. Alrighty. Um, you push open the door. There is a little like tinkle of bells uh, hung above the door. Uh, Brahm, immediately you are met by the all too familiar scent of like ink on paper of sheet music and the like um, uh, sort of like the waxes and polishes used to like uh, keep uh, instruments like well polished and, and uh, uh, maintained. You, um, you can kind of smell the sort of like metallic scent in the air of, of like stringed instruments and uh, um, the uh, uh, kind of like the aroma of like uh, wooden um, reeds that you, you know you associate with um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for uh, wind instruments um, <laughs> there are a couple of people um, in the shop just sort of browsing from what you can see um, there are rows along the walls of various like um, sheet musics compositions um by you know famous bards and uh, things of that nature um there are all sorts of like sundries that you would expect in a music shop cases strings extra reeds you see there's like a, a shelf that has like several metronomes sitting on it um there are uh, what what appears like towards the back of the shop. It appears there are some maybe higher value items. Um, you see, there's like definitely some cases where some um, some very fine instruments appear to be displayed. Um, but generally, this is a you know this is a shop that has all manner of, of instruments that you could imagine um, and assorted sort of uh, things that go along with uh, with that. Uh, is there anybody who looks like an employee? Uh, you do not see anybody at the, like everybody that you see in this main like space right now appears to be like a shopper, just kind of like looking around, browsing, browsing through the the you know wares that are for sale here. Uh, then I guess we'll, well at least I'll like make my way to the front counter to okay. see if there's anybody. All right. So as you head through the shop, um, make a. Make an investigation check for me. Fifteen. Fifteen. With a fifteen, you notice that there are a number of very, like, well-crafted instruments in here. There are lutes, there are lyres, there are pan flutes you see. Um, you see hand drums, you see um, several sets of bagpipes, you see a um, uh, you know, a, a hand harp, you see so, well, several large, like, standing floor harps. Um, you kind of see that there are you know, there are no instruments in here that, are, that you would like, you know, with your fairly trained eye that you would classify as like crappy everything is of pretty good quality here um but there are some like specimens of, of various varieties of uh, of instrument here that are uh, you can tell ju even just by looking at them um are of the utmost craftsmanship and care um as you approach the back of the uh the, the shop towards where there's sort of like a counter um you see that there is um, beneath glass along that front front counter. There are a number of um, small, like carved wooden boxes, um, and you see that each of them, off to one side, has a uh, has a very small, like metallic copper, like turnkey, um, like inserted into a slot in the side of them. They are all sort of closed and beneath the glass, um, and there are like little price tags next to each of them. Um, you also see behind the counter in a um, in a glass case, which is instantly recognizably like locked, um, and you you just get the sense that is like enchanted in some way. Um, you see an instrument, um, you see a lyre, that you just like something in your gut 
tells you immediately, like, this, this instrument is special in some way. You have your, your Bandor. Um, this lyre gives you the same, like, gut feeling. Just, like, laying your eyes upon it, like, stirs the sort of, like, muse inside you. This is a, um, a very, very special piece of, uh, like, a musical instrument. Um, that is sort of what you see. Uh, you said it, you had a 15? Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else as Bron makes his way to the front, like, what are you all doing as you're in this shop? Trying not to break anything. <laughs> Walter, Walter is like looking around and thinking back to when Brom got his masterwork violin, and like understanding that there is no way, shape, or form that like they can possibly defraud anybody here because everything is of the utmost quality. So uh, Walter is also basically just kind of sitting on his hands and like trying to browse, like he knows what he's looking at. Okay. Um, largely, if you're browsing, largely waiting for. Walter. If you're browsing around, go ahead and make an investigation check as well. Sure. And Zintris, what are you up to? Probably looking around. I'll probably follow Brom towards the main counter because okay. I always like to see what's behind all the pretty glass things. Okay. Um, and just kind of. Um, was that around. a twenty, Walter? Yep. <laughs> With the twenty, Brom as Brom like kind of leans against the counter, sort of looking like trying to attract the the attention of somebody who uh, you know works here or whatever. You come across a piece of, uh, you're not sure what sort of ca what catches your eye about it, um, but you you like look into one of the racks of like various sheet musics and you you pluck one out almost seemingly at random and you look at it, and the title across the there's like a title uh, you know of the composition across the top and then like an author and then like sheet music, um, and what you see on that piece of sheet music is that the the uh, a particular page that you have pulled has the title at the top, What is Love? Semicolon, mm. Baby, Don't Hurt Me. Um, <laughs> and the, the uh, like, composer is listed as Sir Nigel Dewsbury. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna, uh, try, to, I'm gonna try to make look I'm, uh, shopping for this at okay. this point. Alright, you, you have that in your hand. Um, okay. Um, Zindris, you see the same sort of stuff that, that Brom did at the front there. Um, you see those, like, wooden boxes with the little turnkeys in them. Um, there's a couple of other, like, little metronomes in the, in the, the um, uh, in the case the, there. Um, what are the price tags on the little turnkey ones? Uh, they, they vary. Um, some of them are listed at, uh, like, the highest one that you see is listed at 50 gold pieces. Um, some of the lower ones, there are ones that are for as, as, like, um, as little as, like, five or ten gold pieces. Uh, obviously the ones that are, like, five gold pieces are very, you know, very simple, um, not, like, not, not extremely large, not carved with, uh, you know, enough, a high amount of ornateness. The 50 gold piece ones are much more ornate. Um, one of the 50 gold piece ones you see has a, uh, it is, it's not... There's nothing, like, it's not doing anything, but the lid of this little box has been opened. Um, inside the box, uh, you see that there's, like, a series of little complicated mechanisms, like these little mechanical clockwork mechanisms. There's this, like, rolling-looking wheel that has a bunch of these little, like, nubs poking out of it. Um, in the center of the box, there is a little, like, pedestal. And atop that pedestal is, a, is this very small, like, four-inch figurine of a... Um, uh, like a little like organ grinder monkey um it is this like little monkey it's got a little vest and a little fez on and it has like a pair of symbols attached to its hands um that is the one of the, like the more expensive ones um but uh you know the the the, the there is a, a wide array of these um so brahm you are you're, you're just kind of like waiting to see you know see if you can attract somebody's attention when somebody like comes around yeah. Wait, is, is Walter doing anything? I think Walter that information just has it, right? Uh, no, no, no. Walter has not shared that information at the moment. Uh, okay. I, I, I currently have a sheet music. Because depending part. on what Walter does, this interaction may change very drastically. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm just sitting on it. I'm just, I'm just sitting on it for now. Uh, okay. 
Um, so after a few minutes, if you're just sort of waiting at the at the front here, uh, after a couple of minutes, a uh, a gentleman comes out of the uh, the back room. Um, he is a little like he's a little peculiar in appearance at first. Um, he appears to be human, as far as you can tell. He is uh, probably in his 60s, maybe, you think? Um, or like a real hard 50s. Um, he has, uh, like thinning, sort of whitish hair. It's sort of combed over to one side of his head. He's wearing very, like, simple garments. Um, he kind of comes out of the back room, uh, holding a, um, a, a, like, a manila folder full of, like, parchment pieces, par pieces of parchment, and he comes over and he, like, sets down at a back table, um, and he turns and sort of looks in your direction, and you see that, um, you, you first took him to be, um, a human, but you come to realize that, like, he's actually either an elf or a half-elf, the reason you took him to be human was that, like, the side of his head that was facing you, you know, his ear was sort of rounded off. But as he turns to face you, you see that, like, this, like, half of his face bears, like, a pretty, like, a pretty gnarly, like, scarification of some sort. Like, maybe he was burned. And the ear on that side, like, the long elven tip was basically, like, burned away or cut away or something so that it's, like, ra kind of rounded now. But the ear on the other side of his head is, is elongated and more, more elven in nature. Um, but he turns and he looks um, and he casts, like, a gaze specifically, Brahm, over Ewan's interest as you're, like, at the, um, you know, at the gate. And he says, oh, welcome. How may I help you today? Uh, well, I'm looking for something specific, but I'm also, uh, now interested in some other things in your fine establishment. I would be more than happy to assist you with anything that you could be interested in here. Pray, tell me, what has caught your eye, my fellow? Well, uh, first off, uh... I'm looking for a wand of conducting, if you have. I do, in fact. Um, I have uh, a number of them on hand in stock currently. Uh, and also, I could not help but noticing uh, the absolute uh, masterpiece that is this. Uh, it was a harp, right? The, where, the thing in the case, yeah, is a liar. Liar, yeah. This this liar. Oh, thank uh, you for thinking so, up, bro. He. Uh, what did you say, Walter? I, I, I said I said well, thank you for thinking so. Uh, Walter uh, was making a joke, and act, acting uh, as if he thought he was a masterpiece. Shut up, Walter. There we go. He uh, he turns and gestures back towards the case, and he says, "Ah, oh, yes, the uh, one of the rarest pieces that has ever come through my shop." It is of uh, foreign origin, um, and I dare say enchanted. Um, a true instrument of only the most skilled masters of the profession, a cly liar. A very interesting. A very interested. Uh, so let's talk about that. Uh, what is the... Uh, give me a sort of run. Familiar. Does that uh, turn? You can make a history check. Um, Brom, what is the sort of like, what is the status of your like outfit currently? You have, you have, um, you know, like, Il Gar uh, the name is escaping a bit. Like, you have glamour that you can, you have glamour, you have glamour. Like, what does your garb look like right now? Uh, st standard Brom clothing. Okay. Currently. Do you have your tails on? Back out. Your tails? Oh, wait, no, that's right. You're, uh... you're in your fancy brom or your regular brom? Probably like normal brom. Just like the vest. The, the, the vest, yeah. 
I got a, a 25 on history for what the heck a cly liar Iris, is. He there. says a cly liar. Um, uh, you know that that cly is a um, uh, sort of a location, sort of a group of people. Um, the the cly are. Uh, essentially like I'm trying to think of like a real world equivalent uh, essentially you know that they are like so it's like how champagne right like champagne to truly be champagne like comes from the like champagne valley in france like it is a thing that is like so legendary for like the creation of this one specific thing that like the name of that, like, of the, 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 the thing has been attributed to the product. That's sort of the, 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 the thing with a, with a cly liar. It has been, it, it is a, if it is authentic, it is a, it is an instrument made in a, in a place by a group of people that are, um, rumored to be, like, legendary in the production of, um, this certain like type of instrument there are like there are not known to be very many of them in existence um, so this is a stradivarius wire it is a stradivarius um <laughs> so it is essentially like uh in game mechanics terms this is an instrument of the bards much like the uh folk lucan bandor that, that brahm already has um it is a like a highly magical musical instrument she probably whispers, oh damn, under her breath when he said, like, and she's, now she's okay, let me, at I'm gonna, I'll do it, I wanna see, I didn't think to roll to see if Brom knows. I don't think you need to make a roll. I think you, you know. know. Just look. Do you know what it is? Like, Bra not like that's not a thing that I'm requiring you to make a roll for. I'm assuming you have that, like, you can look at this thing and you can immediately, like, as soon as he says, like, oh, it's, this is a Cly Liar, you're like, holy shit. You know what this is automatically. All right. Well, now we're going to get to the not so pleasant part. Uh, what uh, what might be the? Co I'm not like I, I notice somebody else's look. I'm like I'm going to ask like the you. price, you <laughs> savages. No, for like two hours. Everybody in the, everybody in the like the shop thinks you're about to threaten this man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not about this to man. in the process of. Brom pulls, pulls a literal Glock. I'm all about it. <laughs> now we're going to get to the unpleasant part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, what uh, what might be your asking price? Uh, he says, I have... Uh, I have listed the asking price of this particular equipment. Uh, this, this piece of... magical instrument at 10,000 gold pieces. Hey, Brom. I yeah. found this, uh, this this piece of sheet music I think you might be interested in. And I'm just going to kind of like put it down on the table next to him. After, like after he, after he says the price out loud, I'm going to like put the table and, it's like, and just like roll out the sheet music. It's like, never thought I'd see this here. This is interesting. Hmm. This definitely means something, but I don't know what it means yet. Um, the proprietor looks at the piece of sheet music and he says, uh, he says Ah, that is a, a relatively new piece of music. It has been um, uh, circulating uh, within the last year or so, to my knowledge. Uh, uh, very popular. The, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. I, I, I believe we've actually... Uh met this person before oh nigel Did... dewsbury the the purported uh, creator of this uh this piece of music um i i've heard he's kind of reclusive but uh do you think um this would be worth anything if it was you know signed by the artist we could get a signed copy um he kind of like he sort of like shrugs a little he says ah that is not really my uh my area of dealings. Um, my instinct would be that it would be, uh, considering the reclusive nature of this um, Nigel Dewsbury, 
Um, it would be, I should think, rather difficult to prove that any type of signature was authentic. You do not. Um, in any event, it is, uh, it is really not my line of business. I am, I am merely a proprietor of the Beautiful. Well, follow-up question. Uh, who, uh, are you, are you printing these yourself? Or are you getting them from a supplier? Like, who's... Like, uh, well, how are these procured? In, in much the same way that, uh, that any piece of music is procured, the, uh, the traveling bards of the uh, of the land uh, he hear songs or create songs and travel with them, performing them. They are then uh, replicated and duplicated, and uh, eventually someone thinks to put them to a piece of sheet music, and then they end up in a place like this, where anyone with the passion for the musical arts might uh, recreate their beauty for themselves. Oh. How much is this sheet of music? Uh, is this for the the piece of sheet music there? Uh, yeah. uh, one gold piece. Sure, I'll, I'll I'll take it and I'll like pay the gold. He takes the gold. And I'll just I'll just roll it up and put it. And uh, just now. just out of curiosity, how how well has that specific piece been been selling? Uh, it's it has been quite popular. Um, as I understand, it has been uh, become something uh, as the. As the youths have been calling it, uh, it is something of a bop. <laughs> uh, rather popular at adolescent um, gatherings, uh, taverns and such that, uh, that attract a younger crowd. Um, not, not necessarily my flavor of music, but hmm. popular nonetheless. And uh, are you are you printing these and uh, and receiving all the profits, or do you have to pay, uh, you know, so any sort of royalty to anybody? Um, this is uh, well, um, as this is medieval fantasy times, copyright laws are non-existent. Um, I merely uh, purchase the uh, the um, productions of the the sheet music from a uh, a, a printing house in the city. Interesting. And what uh, what what printing house might that be? Um, he make a persuasion check. About to go get the money from the royalties to pay <laughs> yeah, for this liar. About to go fucking shake down. You said a persuasion. Yeah. Twenty three. 23 uh, he says I purchase um, all of my printed music from the printing house of uh, Monsieur's Fermin and Andre oh boy uh, I think I've heard of them and uh... Uh, he said uh, they had a, um, a rather unfortunate run of luck with an opera house that they owned in uh, Eastern Midland Day, but uh, they have uh, found some success in their um, follow-up career as uh, printers of uh, musical compositions. Very interesting. Yeah, I heard about that. Some some weird thing. It's very, they had a very accident-prone uh, theater. A lot of people thought it was haunted. He, uh, he, there's like a shadow of like a smile crosses, like comes across his face he says yes uh, a series of unavoidable and unfortunate <laughs> accidents occurred in their presence at this point in time i want to find a tuba and blow into it as hard as i can <laughs> make a performance <laughs> check <laughs> please roll a one and swallow say, a two. Roll a no no roll a 20 and make it beautiful and <laughs> just confuse everybody <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Uh, it's it's going to take forever. Why do you roll on there? It takes so long. Because. Okay, here it goes. Coming up. Rolling. Ooh, 
This That's expense good. is killing me. Oh, you bitch. 11. <laughs> okay, well then 11. Oh. Um, this is, yes, a series of unfortunate and unavoidable accidents surrounded their business venture. And then you like, you know the sound from Inception? It's like, <laughs> like <laughs> that happens, and I really like, looks, and Oz just has like a f fucking tuba <laughs> the other side of the... <laughs> this is pretty cool. Um, Bro, this is pretty cool. The uh, the proprietor of the shop kind of like looks over you and he says, um, a powerful set of lungs is a benefit to an aspiring tuba player. That may very well be an instrument that you are uniquely suited to my um, uh, enlarged fellow. Maybe I could get used to it. Who knows? What do you think, Brom? I'm I'm all for uh, in introducing people to to musical uh, new musical inclinations, and I lean over to the cellar and I was like, "Do you sell earplugs here?" <laughs> I, I, I do. I <laughs> How much for the tuba? Uh, yes, the tuba uh, will will cost twelve gold pieces. I was about to say I'll take two, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take two, but <laughs> uh, very good. Okay, uh, I assume you pay them. You pay the man twelve gold pieces. He. Uh, oh yeah, I got thirty-seven gold right now. So you are the proud owner of a tuba. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna count out. Um, I'll try to. <laughs> it's not like I can't count, but I'll like lazily count out like twelve. Maybe I'll like throw in like maybe there's like two more extra and just like. Throw it on the table and being like, "There you go." <laughs> Take. Um, Maybe it's like you, fourteen gold. If you pay 15. him more than the twelve that like that he asked for, he yeah. will attempt to slide the extra back across the table. Oh no, no, no! I'm just like I, whatever. You know, I, I'm just gonna like start walking away. And it's like you're you're fine. Take this. It's enjoyment at this point. Um, he kind of nods and quirks us. Uh, very well, your generosity is appreciated. Um, he says, you, uh, back to Bronze, he says, you were rather interested in the Clylia a moment ago, but you seem to be rather consumed by the, uh, gestures towards the copy of the, the sheet music that, that Walter purchased. Um, do you have a, uh, a particularly vested interest in this uh, this composer, this bard. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, you could say that. Um, uh, he's a good friend, and uh, it, it seems that uh, somebody is making a great deal of money off of him, and he's not getting any of it. Oh, truly. He says... I should be intrigued to hear more of this, uh, this idol Dewsbury. He is, uh, if, uh, though not particularly to my tastes, uh, if the uh, compositional skill of his craft is uh, anything to judge by based on the piece of music at hand here, he is a, um, a promising musician. In, uh, in all well, I, I believe that piece was written uh, uh, for a as a 16th birthday present to uh, someone, so that's why it's all hip with the youths. But uh, he does other stuff. That makes sense. Uh, he says, I, 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 I beg terrible pardon. Your, uh, your name, I, I do not think I got it. Um, you who are so um, well-connected in the, uh, the Bardic community, as it were. Uh, well, uh, I'm uh, Abraham Replock. But uh, I do, uh, I do sometimes use a uh, a a moniker uh, when I uh, need to. Um, sort of, sort of a a stage name sometimes. Cool. Um, and uh, that is Major Nigel Dewsbury. He like raises his eyebrows. Um, he says, "That is quite the claim." 
He says, uh, Would you play something for me? Sure. He, like, looks at the, like, the viol, uh, the violin case, uh, like, strapped across your back. Um, and he says, I am... I have always been partial to the violin. If it would suit you. No problem. Would you like supporting lights? I guess, Walter, if you want to feel included. <laughs> I'll, uh, I guess, sure, I'll, I'll, uh, dancing lights it. And, uh, Walter, uh, as you do your dancing lights, make a, make an insight check. Oh, boy. And Brom, make a performance check. Okay. I look at Brom trying to figure out if he wants any help with this. But I'm not sure if he wants Oh, I, I need an insight, not a performance. Insight would be just a 17. Okay. I don't like the way Ross is staring at his numbers right now. That's because his uh, camera froze again. That's no, strange. Uh... <laughs> 27. Because okay. I rolled the 19. <laughs> what are you playing? Uh, Vi You know, mood, tone, vibe, that sort of thing. What, what, what is it that you play? Uh, I go for reading the the room and the general vibe of this man, I go for, like, the most hauntingly beautiful piece that I can possibly play. Purples and reds it is for the lights. So, uh, Walter, you begin, like, dancing lights it. Uh, with your with your 17 um, check there, you see that, like, his, his sort of, like, gaze flickers over to you for, like, a split second, and you catch this, like, this flash of, like, deep, deep annoyance. <laughs> um, before he like goes back and just tries to focus on like Brom, and eventually, as you like do your lights, he just closes his eyes to listen. Uh, <laughs> you get the you get the sense with with a seventeen, like you get the sense that like he is singularly interested in the music. Um, and Brom, but there are there are still patrons here, right? There are patrons here. Um, you know, there are definitely like some you know some folks here who like sort of turn to look at this. Um, some of them probably appreciate the light show, um, and you know, and kind of listen to the music. Um, but Brom, we're in sort Terra of... Libra. We might as well add some magic. Sure, Brom, you you play the you kind of play the song on your violin, uh, your masterwork violin, and um, he is quiet for a time. And as you finish, he like opens his eyes and he says. Why would you have produced that piece of music under a pseudonym? Uh, it's a bit of a long story, but basically, uh, I was in, uh, incognitus for my, uh, day job. And, uh, that was something I had to do, uh, to, uh, go along with that. The uh, composition was sort of a side thing uh, to go along with uh, the other thing. Um, he says, I will not pretend to understand the intricacies of that situation, but I Hearing you play, have no doubt in my mind that you are the same composer responsible for that. And he points at the piece of sheet music, uh, What is Love, Baby and Hermine by uh, Nigel Dewsbury. Um, he says, I am always pleased to meet a true artisan of the craft. Um, and he extends a hand to like shake yours. I will shake it. Um, and he said, uh, Abraham Replock, you said your true name was. Yeah. Um, he says, I am Maestro Eric LaRue. It is a distinct honor to make your acquaintance. Does that name mean anything to me? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. 
I didn't know if it was just like, oh, this is like the fucking Mozart of uh, no I, Mozart does, of Milan. It does. It does not uh, mean Mozart of Milan. New band name called it. Um, as you shake hands, um, anybody who is like looking in the direction of the two of these guys, like shaking hands, please make an insight check, including Brock. Ooh, I got it. Ooh, not great. 19. Uh, 17 again. Did this man just lose his name to a fey again? That's just nine. Yeah, did he just lose his name? So nine from Brom. And what was his interest in Walter? 17. 17. Uh, 19 for his interest. Uh, Osrius, are you just like fucking around with your tuba or are you keeping an eye on this as well? I believe Oz. Uh, so Oz, Oz rolled. Uh, so I got a natural twenty plus three. Oh shit! Okay. All right. <laughs> here's how we're gonna handle this. So, Brom, you shake this guy's hand. You're sort of still, you know. He he said he said Eric Larue to you, and you're like, you're 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 racking. You're exactly what you did out of character. Like you're you're like, is that neat? do I know that? Is that like a should I, should I be aware of that name? Sort of thinking about that, you're not paying this much attention. Walter and Zintris, you see the two of them shake hands, and, like, you see, like, right, they clasp hands, and they, like, shake, and, like, the second shake happens, and, like, a strange expression comes across Maestro LaRue's face. It's sort of, like, confusion for a moment, and then, like, a, a very, like, rapid flash of things that you can't sort of, like, parse out. Osrius, with that natural okay. 20, however, you, you're, like, you're, like, diddling around with this tuba, but you kind of look up. You see, like, you see this handshake take place. And again, you see the same thing, like, handshake, second shake, as, like, the second shake comes down. You watch, like, LaRue, who was just, like, looking at Brom, having a conversation with him. As they, like, grasp hands, you see... His eyes shift down to, like, Brahm's satchel, to his, like, bag where he keeps his stuff. Yeah. And his, like, brow furrows. And what you interpret as, like, recognition, like, flashes across his face. And his eyes, like, snap back to Brahm. And as the, like, the handshake breaks... With that nat 20, like, you, uniquely, you are, like, in tune with the, like, the split second, like, instantaneous moment of, like, coiled energy before, like, violence is unleashed. You, like, you uniquely are, like, attuned to that. This old man is about to do something violent. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you, like, a reaction to take. Like, you can kind of, like, do something in this moment. Like, you have, like, a split second to do something before, like, whatever, oh. like, whatever this dude, like, whatever happened between when this dude shook Brahm's hand that, like, has totally changed the vibe here. You have, like, a split okay. second to react and do something. Okay. Uh, how close am I to him? Uh, you're probably, like, 30 feet from him because you... Uh, okay. you know, you were messing around with a tuba at the other side of the, uh, yeah. <laughs> the room. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Because, uh, I'm immediately just going to drop what I'm doing and, uh, step up, uh, step up quickly, but just not like running. Okay. And then like immediately just kind of like coming up to the both of them, like real close, grabbing onto the wrist of the old man and kind of like looking down at him real quick and quietly saying, I don't think you want to do that. Okay. And Brom, like just being like quietly and just kind of like side eyeing Brom being like, and looking over to the old man being, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah. I'm going to take Brom, uh, Oz's lead. And yeah. Okay. Just trying to keep it calm. <laughs> Oz like rushes forward. Uh, make a uh, let's call this an attack roll um, to see if you can like grab hold of him. Okay, do I, uh, what like unarmed? I guess at this point, just are we still like locked in handshake or are we broken up? 
I think, He's like, not. as the handshake breaks, he started to, like, draw his hand back in a way that Oz picked yeah. up on was, like, okay. something is about to happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, just... like, as the hand started coming back, Oz dashed across and, like, grabbed it. So you guys yeah. are not connected anymore. Okay. Just, like, it's so an unarmed strike, I guess, that's why we do it against. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make, a, make an unarmed yeah. strike. That's what I like. Uh, once that's unrolling, that is a 26. A 26. You grab his wrist. And you say, like, yeah, was it, I don't think you want to do that or whatever. Yeah. And being, like, quietly being, like, I don't think you want to do that here now, do you? You grab his arm. Um, <laughs> he, like, he gives, like, a kind of a perfunctory tug and, like, absolutely is, like, utterly incapable of, of like, yeah. pulling his <laughs> hand away from you. Like, the strength differential is too great. Like, he has no chance <laughs> of, like, overpowering you to pull his hand away. So he gives, like, exactly. a tug. It's not going to happen. Um, all the while, like, he does not take his gaze from Brom. And Brom, you see, like, as Oz kind of says this, and you back off, and you're like, fuck, what? What is happening? Like, you see, like, a change has come over this, like, this older gentleman's face. The sort of, like, the the, the scarred half of his face is hard to read, uh, but the, like, the unscarred of his face has, like, contorted into, like, a, like, a stony-faced um, expression of, like, outright hostility. Um, and he says to you, uh, Brahm as like as Osrius is like holding onto his uh, his wrist and he says can I can I do one thing before he does that uh like I, we, what what would depends so what my reaction to, to like um what Oz said in like in this moment if I had time I would like to as a cantrip uh, cast blade board on myself okay if possible. yeah you can, you can do that so you're like oh shit you back up yeah. and instinctively throw up magic um, and then his face, like, turns stony. And he says, All of these years, finally they have come for me, eh? I think you shall find I am not so easy a target even in my old age. What do you do in this moment? Um, bearing in mind that, like, how you react in this moment is going to determine whether we roll initiative or not. Uh, Brahm is gonna, like, put his hand and goes, Alright, I don't know who they is, but I can tell you honestly, uh, we did not come here for you and had no idea who you were before walking in here. This is uh, why I'm holding your wrist okay. and not... And not, and not ripping your neck. arm off. Uh, Which is what you why still have an arm. <laughs> yes, this is why I'm holding uh, your wrist, sir, and not ripping your arm off at this moment. Osrius, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, you, you little shit. <laughs> you had to pick my wisdom? You had to be. I did. <laughs> He's a level 20 ball. Wisdom, wisdom saving throw. Another 20 would be great right now. Ooh. Oh, no. 13. Okay. It about did it. In your mind, Osiris. Yes. You hear kind of this like whisper in the back of your head that just says, Release me. Um, and you are absolutely com like compulsion, like compelled to just obey. Oh, what a what a beehole! <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, Brom, you and uh, Zintris and Walter, I guess, kind of you're all sort of at the counter at this point. You see, like Osrius's like face kind of glazes over, and he just lets go of this dude's arm, um, and he takes like. A step back. Uh, were you you you're gonna say something? Else? Are you doing anything like different? Anything specific? Well, no. Nah, I guess if I'm compelled to let him go, then yeah, you you have you do in that instance like you have no choice but like to obey that command of like release him. You let him go. Once that command is then released, does it the in like does the impulsion still stand? You or are what? you are. Um... I'm sorry yeah, for I mean, like, you trying are, to get you to say you it. You <laughs> feel like you feel. 
Just a command. You kind of like... You, you you feel yourself let go of him, and then you are, like, now acutely aware of the fact that you were, like, in, in a sense, like, some sort of the, like, um... Just, he can, like, he's manipul yeah, he's you're manipulative Yeah, you're almost, like, watching somehow. yourself, like, you, you, a certain point of your, like, free-willed mind is, like, watching the rest of your consciousness as, like, this dude has fully, like, just, like grabbed like grabbed hold of your of your willpower and is like bending it to his like his preference you are still under whatever the effect of whatever he did to you right. question yes is this a charm effect um yes it is uh seeing that because i think it's pretty obvious that this guy just did some magic i would uh then if possible cast the finally it comes in use uh counter charm <laughs> Okay, so the way that, uh, the gives, way that counter gives charm him advantage. works, unfortunately, the way the counter charm works yeah. is that, like, you have to be already doing I, it. So oh. immediately, like, you we, yeah. we, you already have your violin in your hand, right? So you immediately, like, you see this happen, you take your kind of step back, and we can certainly say that, like, you begin to play a, like, a dissonant chord that is, like, at odds with the, like, the effect of the magic you think is coming from this guy. Um, so if, like... Yeah, it's basically like so for Oz's next, next quote save. unquote round, like Oz will yeah. be able to make yeah. it. That's that's my intention. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Literally, so you never like, had a use for it before. You step, yeah, you sort of step back. Oz kind of does this. Oz lets this guy go. This guy sort of step back, steps back. Um, I he, imagine that drops my blade ward, right? Because they probably uh, blade no, ward concentration. concentration. I think uh, blade ward yeah. is no, no, uh, the. The other one is not, not, so you're fine. So, okay, so, okay. Right? But it only cool. lasts, you know, this round. Yeah. Um, so I think what he does in this moment is, like, he's like, release me. And, and Osiris just, like, zombies out and lets him go. He immediately, like, turns around and, like, flicks open this glass case and pulls out the Cly Liar. Um, and, like, arms oh, himself shit. with it. Um, and he turns back to you, Brahm, as you had said, like, I don't know what is going on, but, like, I promise you we're not here for you. Um... He turns back to you, this, like, this liar in hand. He, like, without breaking any apparent sweat, like, absolutely, like, dominated Osrius into some kind of, like, mind control situation. Um, he, like, turns to you and he says, um, he says, Do you think I don't recognize what you have in your bag now, assassin? I have been prepared for this moment for decades. Hey, what does he have in his bag? What is yeah, it? Yeah, I go. Yeah, I go. Uh, in the bag. Honestly, was it, was it the music box? Can... Honestly, do not know what you're talking about. And I would like some clarification here. What do I have in my bag that is? Uh, Quick question: Are the other people in the shop just leaving at this point? Please. Yeah, a bunch of people are like, "Whoa, fuck!" And they like well, well, they well, start well, piecing well, out. Kind of like shuttling them yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm not leaving Brom's side, but I wanted to make sure they were all leaving. I, uh, Walt, Walt Everybody just, like, flashing back. the sheriff's badge, like I'm, just uh, like let's, we, we got to take care of. Just get out. Just just as a point of order, in case this pops. Is there off. one guy? Is there one guy in the back who's like? Loot! <laughs> and he just grabs the loot and runs out. <laughs> <laughs> the stupidest fucking joke. Point of if order. I hate you. Theft and I hate you. Pun, I'm gonna yeah. bash the face. I'm gonna. I. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, I got committed pun and dash. You guys handle uh... the thieves. Point of order. I'm putting my hand on Brom's shoulder, but I'm not saying or doing anything aggressive. My hand is just on Brom for the moment in case this starts off man they're really looting out here full stop i hate you guys so much <laughs> <laughs> okay uh brom make a persuasion check with disadvantage as you oh, try boy. to like, whoa buddy defuse the situation but like this dude is hostile and you're maybe not sure a, why maybe take a half step back all right the lower <laughs> is a f okay I, I persuasion you said persuasion you're trying to calm him down. Uh, 19. The lower is a 19? Okay. Yeah, because I rolled the 14. The lower is a 14. He's about to get ball tapped if I get <laughs> cash. Uh, he, like, looks at you, and you see, like, a flicker, a moment, like, passes across his face. But, like, he, he seems to believe you. Like, you seem genuine. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, 
he says, um, he says, you carry in your bag an item of my own creation. They have wielded it as a weapon for years now. You think I would not sense the presence of a mask of a thousand faces in my own mm. shop? Who are you really, and what do you want? Oh, all right. Easy explanation. Well, maybe not easy explanation, but uh, a better explanation for you. Uh, yeah. Mask of a Thousand Faces. I have it. Uh, let's say, uh, I didn't earn it in the normal way. I earned it in the fucking stab the guy and took it way. We technically did a favor. <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> uh, well... Not to get into too much, but uh, I I worked for them for a while, uh, and then I found out they're not so great, and they decided they didn't like me anymore. So now, um, you think they're looking for you? Boy, howdy, are they looking for me? I say nothing, but in my head, I'm so sort like, of it together. I'm like, oh, fuck! If anything, if anything, like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend here. Make, make another persuasion check. Straight, uh, straight, straight roll. Okay. Time. Not a disadvantage. He's he's like curious now. So, uh, it's gonna be a sixteen. Okay, the sixteen. He says, "You were a member a member of the Brotherhood of Artanis, and you left their order and walk free through the streets." Yeah, as in they haven't managed to kill me yet. Yeah. Quick quick note. Um, the fight with the Brotherhood members that tried to kill us, the, that led us with to Zitrus, mm -hmm. was that today? No. Some time, okay. some time ago. Some okay. number of years Okay, ago. so we are we are rested and I'm not yes. still, still your... heavily injured from that previous experience. No. No, you guys didn't okay. roll in here like deeply burned to a crisp or anything like that. Yeah. No, it's been some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just bent them <laughs> outside. Sorry. Gotta... <laughs> Can, mm, I'm tempted to butt in, but I don't want to butt in at the same time, so I think I'm staying out of this. <laughs> um, he says, LaRue says, you were a member of the Brotherhood and departed. How are you still alive? What is the nature of your relationship with the Brotherhood of Artanis, and what was the nature of your departure? I, like, looked at him, and I was like, I, I literally just said it, my man. Like, he said I found out, I found out they were into some deep, uh, not great shit, and, uh, <laughs> then it got real violent. It got real violent. And also, again, like I said, the reason why uh, is because they haven't managed to kill me yet because they keep throwing guys at me and I keep bitch slapping them. And he keeps... <laughs> keeps blowing them down. Would you Would you like a list? And Walter will start disguising self and the different key people we've like... In, uh, what's it called? <laughs> He's blowing uh, them down. Murdered. <laughs> murdered. Uh, in, in I was going to say interrogated. You want to see the people we've liberated from life? <laughs> and wear their heads occasionally. Um, he looks at you and he says, I am willing to entertain the possibility that you are not an assassin. Finally discovered my identity after all these years sent to kill me and that perhaps we may have things to discuss. I should like you to be aware I have dominated your large friend. He is currently under my control. This was unavoidable as he was. holding my person I will release him
color though. He kind of like looks at Oz, who just has sort of like a blank, docile look on his face. Uh, he says, The effect of releasing him from the spell will return his full faculties to him, and the result may be violent. I do not know your friend to uh, know such things. I can assure you that should you fail to contain him, that we might take this conversation elsewhere. I am not as frail and defenseless as I appear. Am I understood? And he like turns at Osiris, he looks at you and you kind of like hear yeah. him. You sort of see and hear this kind of like from a distance as you are like behind. He says, Goliath, I am going to release you from my control. The, okay. He says, doing so was necessary and may become necessary again. He like kind of looks so wrong. Should this prove to be a devious ruse? If indeed you are, as your friend claims, enemies of the Brotherhood of Artanis, then we are perhaps allies in this cause. It would be unwise of you to act out of aggression when you are released. And it kind of like gives that a moment to sink in, and then you feel the the magic of the like dominate person spell that he has held on you like dissipates, and your like your body and your actions are your own again. Oz uh kind of shakes his head a little bit, gives uh, a a little bit of a deep gruff, and uh, throws his eyes. And then looks back at Brom with a another sigh, but more of just uh, a grant. And he just kind of looks over and he's like, you do that again without telling me. Then we have an issue. Agreed? He looks at you and he says, if I am in need of doing that again we will already have had an issue yeah so fair enough yes continue uh, on what you're doing he walks around the counter and he kind of like walks past you guys and he goes to the front of the shop and the, the open sign he like turns it to closed and he locks the door and he like draws a shade and he turns around and he says what is your current relationship with the Brotherhood of Artanis? Uh, not great. Pretty much pretty high on their hit list, I imagine. I have been... in hiding under this identity here for several decades. I am afraid I do not know the current status of the Brotherhood of Artanis and their list of public enemies. At a time, I would have thought that <laughs> whatever it is you may have done, it would be unlikely that you are higher on the list than I am. Well, I don't know what uh, they want you for, so I can't really speak to that. Um, he says, before I choose to divulge any further information, I should like to know what it is that your intentions toward the Brotherhood and their future machinations might be. Complete and other destruction. Uh, 
a lofty goal. One might think it was. The type of goal only a fool would think to undertake. Convenient. You got that right, baby! <laughs> Fool's Aaron, pleasure to meet your acquaintance. <laughs> I just met them. I don't think I count as one of them, but yes, that's their name. Legitimately. They are fools, but they're talented also. They're very, they're very fool trainee. Um, he kind of like looks at the rest of you and says, the rest of you were not then affiliated with the Brotherhood only, Mr. Replock here. Uh. Walter like pulls his, his uh, tattoo out, his, his own brand. The, uh, the Moxum group is like, yeah, different affiliation. Hmm. Audrey says nothing. <laughs> if we are working with honesty here, and to be fair to another person who hates them as much as I do, I was not in the Brotherhood. But my boss was. And she is now a traitor to them, and in the Estelga. And I'm here with them planning to, as Mr. Refluck said, destroy them. Uh, make a persuasion check. Thank God for that plus I have on this, because I might need it if I roll badly. I did not roll badly. I rolled a nat 20 plus 11, so 31. Okay, so between, like, what Bron has said and as you say, like... Holy crap. I, I am not in the Brotherhood, but I used to work for somebody who was, in, who was in, and they betrayed them, and now they're in the S. Like, you guys, like, have layered on a handful of things that seem to indicate that, like, things within the Brotherhood of Artanis are, like, kind of going to hell. And as you kind of, like, lay these things out and you, you tell him you know with all honesty like this is the situation he takes all of this in and he's quiet for a moment and then he goes i give him my water skin. i give him my water skin i'm like oh god he says they are crumbling from the rot that they have sowed within then good it is no better than they deserve might i quickly ask you a question to confirm something i've wondered but didn't ask my friend yes you may the names of the generals those are just titles. They're not newly chosen, they're just passed down. Am I correct? As far as I am aware, yes. So. Good to know. So that means there's many people out there who carry those mantles that deserve death as well. He says, it is my understanding that the title of General of the Brotherhood or the title of Artanis themselves is passed down only upon the demise of the previous holder of that title. And Would I it be regret... demise or removal from position? Uh, he says, I am only aware of certain elements of the inner structure i was myself never truly a member of the organization he says you have shared with me what and who you are it is fair only then that i share with you of myself that we may discuss how our relationship may be mutually beneficial My name now is Eric LaRue, but it was not always so. 
The name that I once bore is dead and gone to me, and I shall not repeat it to you now, but know that at a time I was approached by the Brotherhood of Artanis for my skill and my talent. I am, and I say this with no hint of braggadociosity, the single greatest arcane musician that has ever lived in this era. The Brotherhood of Artanis approached me, inducted me into their web of secrets, utilized me to craft, and he points Brahm at you, at your bag specifically, the progenitor, the prototype, the very item that you carry with you now. The Mask of a Thousand Faces. I am its designer. I created it at their request. I created it for their use. And when I truly learned what they were putting my creation to use for, I rebelled against their cause. Well, they had had enough of me, and if I was not going to play the part of a dutiful puppet, I would have to be removed. I fled. I left my identity behind, and I became the maestro, Eric LaRue. I set up my shop here, small, out of the way, inconspicuous, and I have led this life in hiding, awaiting only the day that a Brotherhood ass assassin would find me and come to repay the cost that I owe to their organization. But what I find today is not a Brotherhood as assassin come to finish me once and for all, but a fellow defector. Two fellow defectors, it seems. Interesting indeed. You say your goal is to bring low the Brotherhood. I do not pretend to fully understand the scope of their desires. But I should very much like to live my life free from ever having to look over my shoulder waiting for one of their assassins to find and kill me when I'm least expecting it. That being the case, I am inclined to cooperate with your goals, if they be more direct towards the Brotherhood. Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, I'm very glad we decided to walk into this shop. <laughs> I'm looking at all of them because I... And he's looking at you, waiting like, what do you got? What I, What was he specifically missing? looking for? I missed that bit. Him? The, LaRue? Yeah. He says, like, what do you got? Like, what does he want? Specifically, he was like... He was like... He basically told you, like, I... worked for the Brotherhood. I invented the Mask of a Thousand Faces when I dissented from them and, like, didn't want to work for them anymore, they tried to kill me. So I fled and went into hiding and changed my identity and opened this little music shop here, like, where a bunch of magic dudes, like... Yeah, I got. I just don't them. understand what he's asking and then for. He, and then he basically said, like, however, if you people are intending to, like, bring that whole organization down, I might be interested in, like, helping you. So like, what is your plan? Like, what are you doing? Is oh, okay. To know. Like, like, I wasn't didn't understand the question, but now I get. Um... Uh, well, I'm like sort of looking around at the group because I'm like, like exactly how much do we want to tell this guy? 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, when, when Brom's looking at that, I'm gonna say, um, so, it seems like the generals are pretty important. Um, what do you think would happen if one were to defect? A general's defect. Yeah, I specifically didn't say that, but yeah. So Walter's question but, is... Walter, question. Walter's just kind of like asking this question, trying to puzzle it out for himself. Whether whether he like is like understands that's what Zintris's person did or not, it's like... He, know, he does know that, like, there is a general that we're thinking about breaking out of prison. <laughs> uh, My experience with the Brotherhood of Artanis is that when someone who has knowledge of their organization and its inner workings to any extent, even as limited as my own was, decides that they are no longer amenable to the organization's desires, the organization responds by swiftly and efficiently putting them forevermore in the ground. I can only imagine that their response to one of their generals would be the same. He'll, he'll just kind of—he's not going to look at Zintris. He's just going to like kind of just thoughtfully ponder that. Can I twirl his mustache a bit? I guess. I haven't tried this yet. I have a question. Actually, first, I have a question. When I cast sending, do I say it out loud or is it all in my head? Uh, let's see. Because it says they hear the message in their mind, recognizes me as the sender if it knows me, and can answer in a like manner immediately. Um, I mean, I guess the question here is like. Who are you are you sending? You about to send a message to like the dude in the room with you, or are you sending a message elsewhere? Elsewhere. Uh, I'm wondering if I can let's see. It so components, quietly. vocal, somatic material. So based on the fact that it has a vocal component, I would imagine that like you have to speak this out loud. So like if you are trying to do this, you know, if you want to send the sending spell but don't want anybody to like overhear or whatever, you probably need to like move out of your shot. I'll, I'll wait then. Okay. I'm not, I don't want to... <sighs> then in that case, since I don't want to just blow all this up right now, can I just general insight check him for how I feel about how much I want to trust this guy? Yeah, make an insight check. So if you need to, if you'd make a sending in peace, uh, I do have a 10 minute ritual cast of silence that I can make okay. for a quiet room for the rest of us to sit in, so you can have some sort of cellular privacy. <laughs> it's okay. I got, I got a... Uh, 17 insight on him. Uh, with a 17, like, this dude, I mean, based on everything that has happened in the moment since, like, he he and Brom, like, I physically touched. Up, yeah. Uh, like, there is no doubt in your mind that this dude is absolutely hostile to the Brotherhood of Artanis and anybody that he, like, suspects to be an agent. Like, you, you have no reason to doubt this guy's story that, like, he had past ties to the Brotherhood of Art Artanis and he is basically just, like... He was just waiting for the day that an assassin came to kill him. Like he was way too ready for like so any hint like when y'all came in yeah. here and he thought like this dude's an assassin because he had yeah. this item. Like there's no you have no reason to sort of like doubt any of doubt that. Okay. Um you okay. you don't get the sense that he is like you don't get the sense that he is about to, like, hat up and join your guys' cause. Oh, no. You definitely get a vibe of him from, like, what kid, like, what can I, he's, he's, he's trying to, like, use you people. Like, he has, he has identified, like, I thought they were assassins, maybe they're also people that hate the Brotherhood, like, how... Like, okay. how does this benefit me? I just wanted to make sure how much I believed his... Is sort of the sense you get from him. Yeah. Okay. I'm... I, I literally have nothing to lose, so I don't know why I'm holding stuff back. Because, like, everyone's just doubting her at this point. So I'm I'm just going to look him in the, in the eye and say... My friend that was uh, part of them and taken and not killed is a general 
and she's in the Astolgath, and... We're maybe gonna go try to get her, and if you have a way to get us across the war-torn lands, or to get us in, or no magics that can help with that, because at this point we need all the help we can get to ruin their day, that would be lovely. And I will prove it to you however I can, but I don't know how what else I can prove to you since you've been disconnected from them for so long. One of the Brotherhood's generals defected and was not killed, but taken prisoner. Mm -hmm. I saw her, heard her kidnapped. There was no... There's been no word of a death, as far as I know. What limited I know. There's been no renaming of a general. He sort of, like, looks to Brahm, um, and he says... It very well may, may be, Mr. Revlock, that you have more intimate knowledge of the Brotherhood's workings than I do in my isolation all of these years, but does that seem to you like their modus operandi? Uh, Brom. To let, to let a defector or a uh, some of the change of heart of the cause live. Rom's not going to fire leave shot. just like... Ah. Fascinating. He says, I am old and not as hale and hearty as I used to be. He gestures towards his, like, half-burned side of his face, and he says, I bear the scars of my younger indiscretions but though my body in my old age may be failing me my mind and the arcana at my fingertips are as sharp as ever he says you possess a mask of a thousand faces I have had decades to think on the theorems that I provided the brotherhood with that they use I assume to this day to craft those items. I can improve yours if you would allow me some time with it. He kind of he sort of nods and you know, as you sort of nod at him, he says your mask upon the death of a foe. You can place it upon their person and extract from them certain elements of their memories and knowledge and information, as well as the ability to take on their appearance. Is that still accurate of the masks that the Brotherhood employs today? Yeah. And there is a time limit on how long the essence of the individual absorbed into the mask may be retained, is there not? It's it's an hour? No, it's a... Uh, I forget what the limit is. Uh, there is, essentially. It's for the yeah, one hour. Yeah. He kind of nods, and he says... I understand better now than I did when I crafted the original progenitor of the item. I believe I can modify yours so that you may store appearances indefinitely in it. The effect, the imprinting of the essence of a person that allows you to leech knowledge from their soul, this I am still eluded on how to extend, but the imprint of a person's image, the ability to impersonate their likeness, I can modify your mask that you can store an identity, a disguise, forever. Is 
Interesting. Uh, I guess I will then uh, take the mask out. Okay. You take the mask out, and he kind of like looks at it, and he reaches forward, and he takes it, and he says, oh, It has been too long. I have laid eyes on one of these. He sets it down on the counter and he says, It will take me some time to alter the enchantments on this device, on this item. Give me three days and I will return it to you altered. Kind of looks at you and he says, "Take this." And he turns. He goes into the back room, um, and he brings out a um, what looks like a platinum little like key. And he reaches into the uh, cabinet in front of him. He brings out one of those, one of like the most, or he brings out the most ornate little like wooden box, the one that you see has that little like organ grinder symbols monkey on it. And he pulls out the brass key from it and he puts in the platinum key. And he like closes the lid and he extends the box, Brahm, and he holds it out to you. And he says, Take this. It will allow you to contact me anytime any place he says simply wind the key and open the lid okay speaking speaking of that um i will reach into my bag and take out uh the broken music box from like a 400 episodes ago be like, uh, is there anything you can do about this? He looks at it and he kind of takes it up and he opens the lid. He kind of picks up the, the broken gears and things inside. He says, Perhaps. He asks, sets it down on the table. He says, I will attend to the mask first and look at your music box here second. there um so he sort of like nods to you and he, he looks to the rest of you in the in the group here and he says i don't know who any of you people are that you have fallen in with this one he nods towards Brom. he says but if your goal like his is to bring low the brotherhood of artanis be it via knowledge or the very particular set of magical skills that I have. Consider Maestro Lulu at your service. Liam Magic Nielsen over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wherever he goes, I go. So. I guess as we're getting ready to leave, we'll just gonna like kind of turn and say, um, if we happen to run into the original Brom, would you be okay with returning it to the original maker? For, referring to as the, the mask prototype. Oh. Uh, yeah, if you want it, we find it. I don't know if we're going to find it. He says... <clears throat> if you manage to get your hands on it... And you can bring it back to me. It will mean that the current Artanis is dead. And I should very much rejoice that gift. Frosting on the cupcake. He 
kind of looks at you and he says, Very well. Be gone now from my shop. I have work to do. Want me to flip the uh, sign back on the way out? No. I shall take no other customers today. Hey, Brom, you want to go to Sears? <laughs> I'm, I guess. You guys... you, well, is, is he already fixing your music box, right? So you don't really, you didn't really need to. Yeah, he I don't like need to takes now. the music box and he takes the mask, and you guys like exit the, like, the the shop. Um, you walk out in the street. You hear the like <coughs> door clicks locked behind you, like of its seemingly of its own volition, and you see as he like scuttles off into like the the bowels of the, the back room of his shop with these with these items. Um, and. Uh, Maestro Eric Larue, um, apparent ex associate of the Brotherhood of Artanis, has taken your Mask of a Thousand Faces, Brahm, and is going to modify it. Um, has taken your music box and will uh, will fix it. Um, Osrius, you are the proud new owner of a tuba. Walter, oh, yeah. you are the proud new owner of a set of sheet music, uh, a copy of What is Love, colon, Baby Don't Hurt Me by uh, uh, Nigel Dewsbury. Um, and Brom, you are currently in possession of a, uh, which you, as you like open and look at it, recognize as like clearly as a music box, um, with a, uh, like an enchanted key set into it that, you know, will allow you to like contact, uh, Maestro LaRue if you so need to. Anywhere next, or uh, what are you guys thinking? Um, so I'm just looking at my sh character sheet. Uh, did I purchase a rope of useful items? You uh, did you credited it because you I... didn't have money? Oh, yeah, you, you put it on credit. Nuri and and Rattlesnap was going to collect it from the rest of your she party. Was like, I'm good. You're good okay. for it. She was oh, like, right. um, she was like, I know I'm good authority that you're good for it. <laughs> um, so I don't know what's actually in that. But I will like, have to give you. I I uh, I will have to give you the like the list of what's in it. I, I have, I, yeah, it's on the thing, but like, I, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, the way that I played it with with Nimue from the other party, who also has one, is that like you do know what's in it. Okay. With the exception of like, there was one mystery one that I put in hers that I'll probably do for yours as well. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't unless unless the spell's done. I guess like I don't really need to. The spell probably is the thing that I will handle in like sort of, and eventually, uh, just sort of like not not and eventually, but more as like when we sort of like tie up all the loose ends and kind of like narratively montage over like here's the result of this this and this and as you guys like gotcha. leave the city, like you'll get the end of that, but like I don't see a need to like have a whole no, no, no. thing about right. it. Okay. Uh, and we gave them the cult of the dragon mask. So nope. Uh, I think I'm good to head back and drink, drink with, uh, what's his name? Boy, that guard that we, uh... Gregory? Gregory. Gregory or Elden. One of them, two. It's Gregory. Gregory is it's the one Gregory. you guys have, yeah. Um, yeah, let's go hang out with him for a little bit. Alright, so you guys are going back to, like, times and have, uh, have a tavern fun. to hang out with Gregory? I mean, unless you guys have other, other more pressing things to do you or tell interesting me? things to do. I don't have business. My business is what we're waiting on. Hey, Ozzy, you want to start street fights for money? No. <laughs> I'll go with I'll go with whatever anybody does. I don't. I'm not the plan guy here. None of us are the plan guy. It's part of the problem. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the plan guy is currently having heart palpitations or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so the plan guy is with the wizards looking you, at stuff. Yeah, Alar yeah. is with the oh, wizards. Oh, yeah, I guess we can, we can go. I guess we can. Well, we'll, we'll I think you're like, your like, big aspect. hit list item is that you need, like, you need. You know that you need to go into. Um. Oh, we need to find a way into the. Ignean yeah. territory yeah, yeah, yeah. and, like, get into the SDF. Um, That's sort of your, like, pressing yeah. thing you need to figure out. Um. 
teleportation, transmutation, not transmutation. Uh, teleportation is conjuration. Do we know the conjuration wizard? Well, there's the whole thing. I mean, you know the Council of Eight, who has uh, the conjurer. Can can we can I guess we'll, we can go probably to find Torian, the conjurer, or a or a somebody. And ask Torian to do an intro since nobody knows. Look, yeah, don't, so now that you, no, I, I say like in character. Now that now that now that Zintra has said, maybe we can just go find Torian. Uh, Walter will immediately turn around and stare at the next nearest alleyway. Yeah, absolutely. He's like at a he's like at like a kebab stand, just like eating, like eating like lunch. Uh, that that's a new thing I want to institute in terms of like whenever y'all are like, God, we need to like figure out a way to get like we need to get the right we need to figure out how to talk to the right person in the ordinum libri yeah. like and you're like we should like torian could probably like point us in the right direction like that's a thing that i'm going to institute is that like He's within in, 10 feet. in any instance where you're like man we really need to talk to torian about this right now like he will be nearby like <laughs> automatically in all circumstances that's, that's why i feel like, like walt's just gonna like turn around <laughs> look at the next nearest alley wow. or food stand that's like the world's worst superpower <laughs> i'm sure he believes so also um yeah, is, is he uh, is he nearby? He absolutely is. You like you turn around, he is one hundred percent at like a noodle stand, just like eating pho. Like, just like... <laughs> all right. Uh... You you like turn around, and you're like, man, we really could use the like, and you turn, and you look, and he's like already making eye contact with you, just like eating noodles <laughs> in his stand. Yeah, uh, let's just walk over, we'll order a bowl, and ask questions while it's while it's waiting to come out. <laughs> you like order this, food. Uh, uh, he kind of looks at you and he says, "I trust that a lot of you are having a fantastically illuminating day." Uh, not as not as explosive as a couple of days ago, but pretty decent so far. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can't answer this directly, so I'm just going to ask for the person who can. Uh, we're looking for someone who is versed in conjuration magic, specifically. Uh, in regards to long distance travel, he says you're attempting to uh, bypass a great amount of overland travel to reach yourselves um, within the Empire's borders. Yes, that's why we went to you. <clears throat> we didn't have to explain as much. <laughs> uh, he kind of nods. He says, "Well." Um, I have uh, several pieces of good news, um, he says. Tomorrow, uh, you have a meeting with a subsect of the Council of Eight. I think you should there be able to develop a workable plan on how to get yourself into the Empire, and I have taken the liberty of... Expediting the process of getting an independent set of contractors involved in your particular predicament. Uh, that will be of, I should hope, extraordinary use to you. I expect no less. Well, no less. Uh, I do have another question. Um, some of us uh, don't handle teleportation that way. You wouldn't happen to have any kind of uh, stomach stabilizer or access to it or know where we could purchase it. Is there an RX stand five feet from me that we are sitting in front of right now? <laughs> I just, oh, you're looking for Famotidine. Uh, <laughs> uh, he says, unfortunately, the, uh, the effects of teleportation are uh, as presently an illusion, uh, a mystery to modern arcane sciences. Um, those... Those affected with the teleportation nausea will uh, merely have to throw up and get over it like the rest of us. Cool. Uh, bags. Small disposable bags. Also an option. I trust that you are more than capable of acquiring such a, such a thing without my divine intervention. Can I reverse pickpocket our shared bag onto him? You're trying to give him one of your bags of holding without him noticing 
Is that the idea there? I'm kidding, obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, the diviner who knows exactly why we're talking to him in the first place. I'm going to try to reverse pickpocket. No. Um... Okay, we're gonna, don't use that bag. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow we have a meeting with the people that we will need to see. He says, uh, "Yes, I think uh, I think everything shall shall fall in an orderly fashion if you uh, if you uh, vi pay a visit to Ladris Keep tomorrow around lunchtime." You seem less stressed than usual. The timeline must be a little less chaotic. Uh, he says things are at a point where there is significantly less need for my influence. Uh, I have been able to the reduce the amount that I am having to interfere with things. Can't tell if that's good or bad, but we'll see in time, I guess. Kind of shrugs his. That is sort of the nature of things, is it not? So, uh, quick, quick bonus question. Um, the, uh, nope, nope, you were aware of that, never mind. The, the Fey entity, I, I was gonna ask about the, uh, the Grimalkin, who we had invited to, to follow us on our adventures. <laughs> um, uh, oh, yeah, actually, no, I do want to ask about that. Do you know where we could find more information about those creatures? In case it becomes a problem in the future. He says... Pay a visit to... Dungeons, Diamonds, and Delves. A... Uh, an eatery here in the city. Ask to speak to their bartender. They will be able to provide you with some illumination on the matter of creatures such as the Grimalkin. Well, we were going to go to a bar anyway. You guys want to go to Mage Fieri's? Give it a sure. look. I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, Torian, I have a question for you before we wander off to this restaurant bar combo place. Um, knowing what you know about everything that you know, and knowing who I would most like to contact right now, do you think if I sent a message of sending to she them... She will not be able to hear you respond. And would they be able to track me, is my secondary question. I think this is... I don't want to lead them anywhere. That is not a question that is within the scope of my foresight. Okay. Fortunately, I do not know the answer. So she can't hear me, and we're not sure if they can track, so don't play around. Got it. Thank you. I was tempted before, but I decided against it for these reasons. What can you do? Um, he kind of smiles a little bit. He says, Given the right set of circumstances, what the lot of you can do is <laughs> quite a bit. But for now, on with you. Uh, have your discussions, uh, and remember, tomorrow, lunchtime. And he, like, flicks a coin to the, uh, the stall keeper, um, and pays for both his food and, uh, Walter's slash anybody else that, like, got food while they were here, um, and he sort of, like, strolls off down the street. Okay. Uh, do you guys mind if we go talk to them? I'm curious about what I invited into this 
party. Yeah, what did you invite? I don't think I got clued into this. This was before I showed up. Oh, so what, yeah. What did you do? So, on the way here... I told you guys everything I did, and I still don't know, what, like, half of what any of you have done. Yeah, so, on the way here, we, uh, thought it would be a good idea to rest for a night at an inn that was, uh, exceptionally conveniently located on the road. Um, and, uh, it turned out there was some kind of entity there that was, um, consuming experiences. Uh, it seems. And, uh, after fighting it for a bit, uh, I told it that if it followed us around, it would have its fill in experiences without having to threaten those random travelers on the road. You know, small meals over time instead of, uh, Hey, so super cursed. Did I mention that? Yeah, part? yeah. Uh, I've, not I've a lot of great on... decision making going on here. I've caught uh, on how times you've just shown people your creepy eyes, and then. The Walter's totally not disguising himself right now. Like, it's yelling, just, just out. Alar yelling tact at you a lot. I've yeah, kind of he figured does out. That. It's that... His thing. Yeah, it's a good it's thing. Like a I, I miss Alar right now. It's fair. Hello. So I wanted. I just want to make sure I know what we're getting into, or what I've accidentally gotten us into. We done probably... something terrible, we'll try to fix it, hopefully. We should probably know before we start running around the Empire if there's something terrible following us from behind since we're running into danger. Yeah. So, I guess the have, bar that converse, have that conversation en route to... Alright, so you guys are going to head to uh, Dungeons, Diamonds, and Delves. Um, yeah. Alright. Uh, you guys head uh, across the town to restaurant the sort of like large flashing ostentatious uh, illusory sign uh, out front um, indicates the the restaurant that you are looking for you uh, you head in um, you find it is um, sort of you know the early dinner rush at this point um, uh, Do they have like an open bar or is it like a restaurant restaurant uh, it's a restaurant, it. but there is a bar, and there is a, a tender behind that bar who um, you kind of see is uh, you know, is wearing like a slick, uh, sort of wearing like a slick, you know, like bartender's outfit. Um, they have a mask that like obscures all of their all of their features. Uh, they're currently like serving drinks to folks who are seated at the bar. Pop up and have a chat. Okay. They look at you. I forget what kind of voice I gave this person. Um. <laughs> I feel like it was suavely ethereal, but I yeah. can't remember. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they like, had like an soft. accent or if they were just like normal spoopy voice. They were French. Uh, no, they, they were French. No, they were definitely not French. Uh, uh, they were either yeah. they were either like vaguely British like this, or they were just sort of like normal voice. Um, that was more British leaning. For the sake of, uh, you know what? They're not. They don't need to be tied down by uh, accent conventions. You kind of pull up, um, <laughs> and uh, as you you head up to the bar, um, the sort of like masked face turns towards you, um, and this this tender of bar that you have been like sent to look towards uh, says, "Good evening. What can I get you?" Unfortunately, I'm a little low on cash right now, so your cheapest drink and maybe a story? <laughs> Lucky for you, I pedal in a different sort of currency. A coin. I put my coin curse away, my coin purse away, because I was ready to start shelling out money here, and I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah, I think I understand why Torian sent us here right now. Uh, he says... I can sense that quenching your thirst for drink is merely a secondary reason for you to have come here. Quenching your thirst for understanding seems to be your primary motivation. I can sense it in the air around you. That's, that's, that's about correct. Kind of so nods. May I, tell you, may I tell you a small tale? And... Uh, he says you may, but why do it uh, on a uh, 
a parched throat. Um, and he looks to the group of you and he says, Since we're going to be having a lovely conversation, what would you like to drink? You know, I've been I've been missing my Milwaukee stout. It's, it's been some time since I've been able to get it. Do you have any here? <laughs> of course I do. Uh, Brahmin's interest in Osiris, he looks at you guys. Uh Alcohol, lick, biggest thing you have? Ah, of course. Uh, run for the pair of you. I'm good. All right. Do you have? Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm going to put that to the test and I'm just going to think of a drink. Okay. And see if he figures it out. Uh, you like, as you like ESP a drink, he goes like, I, no, uh, you misunderstand. I'm not, uh, psychic. I just have all the drinks. You do still need to tell me what it is that you'd like. Oh, that would have been more fun. Fun's been short order these days. Um... Just a cider, preferably one from my home in the Empire. But I say that part very quietly in this place. Yeah, just very well. Um, so, uh, Alar, he, uh, Alar, Walter, he gives you a uh, he gives you a blonde and stout. Uh, as interest, he gives you a cider made of uh, apples that are uh, definitely like you can like sort of like taste the. Uh, the region of the the empire where you know that like they are famous for their like pressed ciders um brahm he uh he slides a like a glass of water to you and then like a moment later he slides across the like uh across the table like a very like uh a very like ornate glass of like uh sipping sherry um, and, like, does not comment on it all. He just, like, slides it in your direction. Uh, and then Austrius, he slides you a thing that is in, like, that is in, like, a 74-ounce, like, <laughs> uh, friggin', Actual like, bucket <laughs> that just says, like, the big chief on the side of it. Oh, he just pushes it towards you. Uh, and it is full of, like, a brown liquid, uh, and he goes... Ah, uh, never clear. He goes, that is our, uh, largest single portion of alcohol <laughs> that we serve here. Jesus. Oh, boy. Um, he says, uh, I should be clear. Uh, your drinks and the forthcoming lovely conversation. I did say I charge a different kind of currency. Uh, and I will point out from the top, uh, nothing weird. Uh, no one here is a sex weirdo, and I should make that clear. Seems like that's come up before. Uh, he says, you would not believe it, <laughs> how much it comes up. Um, that's what she said. For <laughs> these drinks and the conversation. Hmm. He says... I would take either a dirty limerick or a slightly embarrassing anecdote. Do we have to pay up front? No, at the end. I think I have an anecdote that's slightly embarrassing, or ten, so he says, a low what, price. What would you like to know? Well, um, on the road, as I've told our other friend, uh, we ran into a creature, um, it identified itself after we escaped its trap, uh, as the Elastic Grimalkin, and it fed on intrigue and the Malkin you said the last apparently uh, we didn't kill him uh, we I struck a bit of a deal to let us go uh, yeah I, I know cursed a lot frequently it happens a bunch um, 
the the nature was that it fed on intrigue and it kept us trapped for two weeks prom three weeks it felt like a night or two uh and our lives have been nothing but intrigue for the past two and a half years it seems uh, so I figured small, tiny snacks to sustain itself instead of trapping hapless travelers on the road for an indeterminate amount of time might be a preferable alternative that we have a little bit more to help the greater populace. Uh, yeah. But my question was, uh, did I did I ruin this for ourselves a little bit? A lot of bit? I certainly can't back out of the deal. It would be unkind. No. You, <laughs> uh, you don't have a choice in that matter. In fact, I suppose in that case, the uh, it, the lack of choice is more heads up on what you might have to deal with here. What do any of you know of fairies? I love to dance, I like tiny snacks. Can I lights, roll something lights are fun. to confirm what I know? Uh, yeah, you can make an Arcana check. Walter's just thinking back 16. to the shortcut through the uh, the yeah. Feywild that we went on an adventure on. 16. Um, so with the sixteen, uh, so like Walter, you say this, and he says, "You've encountered pixies, apparently." Um, his interest is he says, "Like, what do you know about fairy?" Um, you can, like, you just kind of hear it in his pronunciation of the word that when he says, like, what do you know about fairy? It, it's, like, capital F. And, and he's, he's asking, like, what do you know about the fae as, like, a concept? Um, and what you know is sort of, like, the, you know, the, the, the general. Um, like, they are uh, kind of, wide, like, widely arrayed. Like, they are pseudo... Are they real? Are they not real? Are they stories? Are they not? Are some of them nice and friendly? Are some of them mischievous? Are some of them, like, really bad news? Um, you know, there's, like, superstitions and rules about how you deal with fae um, and fairies and things like that. Um, so you kind of know, like, the, the surface level, like, folklore stuff about fae that you have, you have no really, like, direct, you know, knowledge of dealing with, with any such creatures. When he when he says like you've encountered pixies like, and some others from that forest, it was weirdly purple. He says, "They are a people native to a realm that is not suited to the current background music." This sounds like a nineteen fifties show tunes. Not not show tunes. It was fine show. when we entered this place and it now it's fine is... when you entered the conversation we're having now is not suited now it just makes it extra creepy we talk about the fae. um it is the fey are a people's native to a place like the one you are familiar with the world that you know but beside it the Fae are a people who have lost their connection with their true home and instead have to choose to live either in this realm, it kind of gestures around you, or in the twilight in between that exists in the place where their true home once was. When he says the in between, Walter absolutely like cocks his head. He says, creatures of the Fey have been forced to find means by which to sustain their existence, cut off from their true home. Some, uh, as you clearly have encountered pixies, are minor enough in power that they are relatively unaffected. The more powerful Fae in question, the more deeply they are affected by this severance from their home. 
Some have found ways to continue their existence in peaceful, symbiotic relationship with mortals of this realm. Others, such as the Grimalkin, have taken a less pleasant approach to sustaining themselves, feeding off of those they encounter to the often mortal detriment of those unfortunate enough to cross their paths. Some still have chosen to attempt to return to exist in that in-between place as a surrogate for their home, and those... Luckily for you, those... The Gromalkin is not among those, as they are the worst kind to encounter. Horribly, horribly changed, irrevocably uh, turned into nightmare creatures. Walter's gonna, like, look down at his tattoo and, like, wonder. The Grimalkin. The Grimalkin is not a name for an individual, but is the name of a race. If what you say is true, that the individual that you encountered calls themselves the last Grimalkin. Uh, I cannot speak to that situation, but I can tell you that Grimalkin are creatures of incredibly shrewd demeanor. If you escaped the labyrinth of a Grimalkin and struck a bargain with it that it felt had the potential to be beneficial enough for itself to let you leave without any further molestation, you should proceed with extreme caution. You have promised it intrigue following your adventures. My adv I became British at some point during this. <laughs> I don't know when that happened. It's what happens when you become serious, it's fine. I got serious and I got British. Um, my advice to you is to ensure that your journeys are as full of intrigue as possible. If the Grimalkin is following you, and if it decides that you are not living up to your end of your arrangement, you will find yourselves in mortal peril. If you were not traveling with the person who struck the bargain but now are, does that apply to you? I side eye Walter hard. Kyler looks at the group here and he says, Walter says, Well, that would be intriguing, wouldn't it? You travel together, all of you. Do you call yourselves something? A, 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 a nomenclature, a, a band name, as it were? I slide off of that stool and take <laughs> four steps away from them. Uh -huh, I am not yeah. inducted uh -huh. into this crew yet. And I don't think they want me, so I think I'm okay. He kind of takes that for what it is, and he says, he says, the rules are tricky among the Fey. If you, this group has established themselves as a unit, and you now travel with your, uh, travel with them, you, like it or not, may be considered part of the group and thus part of the pact by the Grimalkin. <laughs> Walter, Walter's gonna do one of these. He's just gonna, just gonna like just like turn to face interest and it's like just kind of like look at her. It's like um... you were worried you weren't gonna fit in. <laughs> sure, I guess 
this is what it is now. He, he says, he says, I will give you this piece of information, and I will waive my fee for this conversation and for the drinks. Under the condition that after this piece of information, I will require the group of you to leave this establishment and not return. The Fae operate under a specific set of rules. They are not mortal beings such as yourselves. Learn their rules, play into their favor, and they can be immensely powerful allies. Misunderstand them or act in folly and they may spell your doom. Not all Fey are of a kind, but Grimalkin, my advice to you is stick to your agreement. If you can outwit this Fey at its find rules you have nothing to fear it was a gambit and I think it was worth it and then with that like Walter would get up and leave I um, take out ac my acknowledging that I can never come back to this establishment <laughs> I take out my I took out my book when he said we don't have to pay him, but this whole time while listening, Zintris was writing out a limerick because she writes. Okay. So I have written it out and I fold it up really small, and I slide it across the bar and I smile and I leave. Okay. So he gets a payment, just not said out loud. Just takes. I, I feel I feel like the the embarrassing anecdote is that Walter has effed up real bad. <laughs> Made a deal with a Grimalkin and then. <laughs> Matt, I'll message you the limerick. Okay. <laughs> how, many, how, many curses, how many curses can one human body handle? Let's lot, find out. Apparently. Uh, okay. So you guys, are you all exiting the, the tavern here? Okay. Uh, is there anything else that anybody needs to do sort of like in the city here before we kind of like get to a wrap up type of, type of situation? He said to learn the Fey rules, so now his interest kind of wants to go to the library. Okay. But that, that's cut CD. That doesn't have to. Be I would say uh, Walter. Walter is absolutely also doing Fair enough. that okay. and like leveraging any any uh, predilection that his interest might have about like finding information in books okay. and uh, picking any any book in any language. It doesn't matter. Um. All right. Then here's how I think. We'll, here's how I think we'll play this. We will. Next session, we'll wrap up all the, like, various loose ends, um, because, like, some of those loose ends involve Alar as well, um, so that'll be, you know, easier to kind of just be like, okay, here's how your thing resolves, here are your thing, um, for the, the sake of tonight's episode, we'll sort of fast forward then, and we'll say it is tomorrow, and you guys are heading to Ladry's Keep, uh, you head to Ladry's Keep where you, like, know that you are s scheduled to have a meeting, uh, you head over there. You are sent to um, the uh, you know the same chamber that you guys had that like meeting in the first place with like the Council of Eight and the pirates and stuff like that. Um, however, there are only uh, two members of the Council of Eight here. Um, they are wearing the the colors that you recognized the first time. The um, the conjurer is here. And the uh, the enchanter is here. Um, they are like waiting for you to have this meeting. Um, and as you guys kind of come in, uh, you enter in, and the uh, the conjurer's what's that? The quarter of eight. Quarter of eight, yeah. Um, the conjurer says uh, it has been brought to our attention that you have some new information uh, and they like turn to look sort of towards interest as well as a, uh, a new member of your group and that you have some more specific direction in your next steps from our last meeting that is 
is accurate. You are informed. Um, the enchanter says, well, tell us what you've learned, tell us what you are looking to do, and we will see what resources the Odinum can provide to help you. I'm gonna hand it, like, wave over to uh, Zintris. Word vomit of who I <laughs> am, everything that they all have heard before. Basically, like, the quick repeat I gave my, the maestro yesterday in his shop, I give huh? to them. And I also just say, and Dorian seems to know pretty much everything, because he got, got me the heck out of Dodge, so... The Enchanter says, yes, uh, yeah, Mr. He, Torian Idrian did provide us with some information as as well as a... Broadstrokes? We'll get to it when we get to it, I suppose. I don't even know how to... Anyway. Nobody understands him. That's you need to get into the Empire. Specifically, you need to get into the Estelgath. Yes. The Estelgath is beyond any resources that the Odinum has at its possession. The government of the Empire has been precious about that aspect of its um, territory. Shocking. She sort of shocks. She says, uh, they, they say, like, the uh, most, most of the kingdoms are closed off as it relates to sensitive uh, portions of their territories or information. It, it is not surprising, though the the Empire is particularly uh, tight-lipped. Therefore, uh, getting to and into or out of the Esselgath is not something that, that we have information to provide you on. Transporting into the Empire's territory is also something that we are ill-equipped for at the moment, as all established teleportation routes and coordinates have been deactivated by the Empire from within, um, shortly before their invasion of Mithlindian territory. We do, however, have means to get you past the the war front getting into Ignan territory and then to the Estelgath and in and out will be upon yourselves after that um, we can get you uh, past the war front to very near to the old border uh, the, the Mithlindian Ignean border prior to the invasion um, and he's not here, but Alar at this point speaks up. Uh, is this is something he's mentioned before? He's like, I have a contact in a border town that I think if we can get like past the war front, like we can go to and like take it from there. And they say like we at least can provide you with that much. Furthermore, to bring the conversation back around to Tori and Idrian. We have a resource to pair you up with. You like see them. You can kind of like sense the like. <sighs> I don't know what this is about. I know only that you apparently are not going to like it. <laughs> well, Walter kind of like looks at Brom as like, it's not, it's not Rogers and the boys, right? No, that would be fine. You say that, and like, <laughs> a door in the back of the chamber opens, um, and you hear, well, 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 
Look what the cat dragged in, boys. We got ourselves a bunch of chuckle fucks up in this place. And... <laughs> fucking Rogers and the boys <laughs> enter into the chamber. Uh, Wait a minute, didn't we kill these guys? You no. did oh, not. We no, we... we, we found a way to get them hired out I think we else. killed one of them you killed you temporarily killed Rogers and he got like res oh, like, yeah. he got like resuscitated oh, I uh yeah Which I um how are these guys where are these guys from in your story like the very very first oh, so like, I, yeah, I, I, I spare the dying on Rogers so Rogers like... and the boys for for those uh. not in the current not in the present chamber <laughs> is a human a human individual by the name of Rogers uh, who is sort of the leader of this three-man outfit? A large, like bald-headed slab of beef, uh, <laughs> thick-browed human man by the name of Carlisle, uh, and a third member member of Rogers and the Boys, a uh, permanently like hooded and covered um, tiefling by the name of Rana, uh, the third member of Rogers and the Boys, who is in fact a girl. Yeah, we had it. We had a um a. Uh... A rivalry temporarily, which we solved with violence. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, yeah, so, we, uh, I think so we, like we, the like, door them to hire out or something. The door slams open. These three come in, and you just you just hear, "Well, how's it going, chuckle fucks?" Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, I think that's probably where we're going to end for tonight. I like right. to think that he slammed it open so hard he said that, and then as he's saying it, it the door's, like, yeah. slowly <laughs> swinging yeah. back. Close. Well, 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 look what the... <laughs> look what the cat dragged in. How is it going, oh, chuckle fucks? Uh, here, can we come in now? Well, Walter's <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like, it's not him, right? It's like, ah. Uh... J what are Jason, the odds? J Jason loves it. I'm here for it. But, uh... I had to say it, Walter. I look at them like, should I firebolt them? <laughs> like, Roger says that, oh, yeah. and then like after a moment of like after a moment of like uncomfortable silence between all of your groups and them, uh, Rana from beneath her hood goes like, "One of you still has my crossbow. I would like it back, please." Uh, it's so okay, that would be Alar. That would no, be that's not Alar. It's not Alar Alar. anymore. It's uh, what's her name? Delker. I think Delker. Oh, uh, it's, it's, no it's, it's, been, anything. it's 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 third hand. Uh, how long has we'll it been? You you're really gonna come after the after it the book? How long has it been? That it is a very special crossbow to me. It has. has no it has one say anything actual, about where it is. It has, it has been an actual human species. Sentimental value. Well, yeah. Look at you all. I don't doubt that. Uh, <laughs> we keep no. we keep rolling this on. I, we're finishing. We have to wrap up. We're finishing. Yeah, I doubt, I you doubt guys can, they you have guys a can... sentimental value. Okay. <laughs> you no, guys it just can... starts an argument. This is you exactly how it ends. Shit on each other next next week. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that's that's gonna be the end of tonight's episode. That is where we had to go. To, uh, next uh, week, I will like I will begin our recap with like the wrap up of all of your guys's like various things that you had going on in the city, and then the like the we'll, we'll establish like okay, you're like. You've now been linked up, like, Rob Rogers and the boys apparently are here that has something to do with, like, getting you into the Astral Gaff. We'll go from there next next session. Um, thank you guys for joining me tonight. Uh, thank you at home for, for hanging out with us. Um, next Tuesday? Which yeah. Is Tuesday sure. the 13th uh, will be a pirate session. Then the 20th will be fools again for the next, uh, the next sort of session on this. Um, other than that, uh, thank you to our sponsors, Little Dragon Corp and Cardboard Castle. And I, uh, I have no other business. Um, please check out all of uh, Proficiency Modus' other shows. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thank you guys, as always, for playing with me. Um, we have finally, like... <laughs> we finally got to our last like deeply 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 heavy exposition episode for like a while i hope um and we will we will be able to like <laughs> accelerate things forward um which, which i have been chiming at the bit for for quite a while now um so we will uh we will pick we up exposed uh, ourselves finally you Ugh. yep no wrong word sorry no nope. we're exposing ourselves that's all it. over the place that's it 
tune in next time quit. for while well, Jason exposes himself. I to quit. The we love no, you. Good night. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Don't call the police.